What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Dauntless Outdoors. We're diving in about 45, 50 feet of water off the coast of Bradenton, Florida. This is my first dive on the first ledge that we're checking out, and as you'll see right there, beautiful hog. Get a nice shot on him, stoned him. It's a big old male hog, and I think he ended up being 17 inches. But as you'll see, I'm kind of checking out the rest of the ledge, and I'm not really seeing anything else. So we kind of decided... Eh, we can take off and go to another spot. I didn't see anything else. Not a bad hogfish. So this is my first dive in the new spot. You should not take any notes from this video right here, this clip. I'm way up in the water column chasing fish around and this is the last thing you want to do, especially when you're ledge hunting. You should just instantly go to the bottom, take your time and kind of just check the area out, especially on the first dive. But as you see, I got caught up in the fish and I should have just went to the bottom because I ended up at the bottom anyways. So. I didn't get anything on this clip, um, as you'll see I kind of chased some fish around, but none of them gave me a good enough shot to take, so just learn from my mistakes and try not to do that. Now I'm on my next dive, and I kind of learned from my mistakes, and I could notice that all the fish weren't really coming to me, and they were all just spooked out. So I went down probably 10 feet out in the sand, and I'm just laying there grunting, waiting for one of the big snapper to come out to me, because I know if I lay there long enough, they're really curious, and they're going to come check out and see what's happening. Because all day they're deciding, oh, what's that food, or what, so... Eventually, they'll give you a good enough shot, and that one came right out and gave me a pretty good shot, and you pretty much always want to try and cl um, grab your fish before you go to the surface so they don't get wrapped up. As you see, he was trying to go up under that leg, and it would have been another dive, and if you aren't careful, that'll take up a lot of your day, so I always like to try and grab my fish before I head up. There's a big red right here. He's legal for sure. So this is my next dive on this ledge. It might be in two dives later, but I spotted a couple of decent red, uh, red grouper down there on the dive before. And I knew there was one up under this ledge that was probably about 21 inches, 22 inches. And as you see, he's right there. I could have taken the shot as soon as I got up under there, but I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything else that I was missing. But I, I take a decent shot. I should have just shot as soon as I swung my gun over. But I did shoot him right in the face, and I wasn't too worried about it. I got a gill plate shot on him, so I was going to mess with him on that dive, and then I just decided I'll go up and gather my time, or gather myself and get some time. But somehow he pulled off, even though it was a gill plate shot. I don't really know how that one happened, but I did end up losing that fish because it just came off the shaft. So another thing that didn't go too great throughout the day. What? Yeah, he's in front of the ledge. So we just changed spots. You guys have seen this area in earlier videos and stuff if you check them out, but this is a pretty good spot it's just a wide area of rocks and stuff spread out but it's typically about 55 60 feet it's a big hump so it, it just depends on where you're diving this was like 55 60 somewhere in that range but i should have just gone straight to the bottom even though it is a hogfish that you can see right there he would have came over to me if i was on the bottom but you can see that other hogfish right above him to the left he was a little bit smaller, so, I mean, he was easily legal, but I told Colin to go get him after that dive, but he didn't really 
like the fact that you watch his buddy get shot. So I get a pretty good shot. Sorry about the camera angle. My GoPro got tilted as we were driving. And good shot. I ended up not ruining any meat there. And I pulled him up to the boat. And pretty good dive. There's another one right down here. He was legal. So this is our first dive on the lobsters. We knew there was lobster from last video. When we're filming this video, it's March 27th. When we're posting it, it's not in season. Lobster are no longer in season when we're posting it. But they were in season when we filmed it. So, Paul is kind of checking out down there. Colin and I were diving with Paul Jones this day. And he, he wasn't wearing a GoPro. And Colin's GoPro clips ended up getting destroyed somehow. And this is my first dive. I go down there and I'm kind of just checking out the area. Getting the lay of the land of how the lobsters are sitting up under there. Sadly, we didn't have any lobster gear with us. If we had snares or tickle sticks or any of that, it would have made it a whole lot easier. But sadly, we didn't have any of that stuff, and I'm kind of just trying to push them out with my gun. A whole lot harder to catch lobster in 55, 60 feet of water than it was. So this is me going back down. This is probably our fifth or sixth dive on these lobsters now, and I think Colin's the only one that's caught one. They're being a real pain, and they're all the way up under this rock now. And when you're tickling them with this, the shaft and all that stuff, you'll see we got shafts under there. We got everything up under there. But they did not want to move. So we ended up just grabbing them with our hands and not even using any of this stuff. We just were tugging on them, and they'd come out eventually. But as you'll see, they really weren't cooperating. I'm just trying to go from any angle that I have open area and I'm shoving my hand up under there and I still didn't even catch one this dive. Colin's grabbing one right now and he ends up catching that one and as you see right there, big hogfish. I grabbed Paul's gun because I've already been down there a while and I get a pretty good shot. I follow him to make sure it's a good enough shot and I did not have the time to grab that fish. I mean if I really pushed myself I could have but all three of us were down and I decided to just play it safe and go to the surface and worry about it later so yeah shark as you see here we have a redneck snare we rigged up a o-ring on the front of a three-part um pole spear this is paul's pole spear it's the middle section of it colin just grabbed a lobster and he's going up and i go down there i'm trying to snare him it's just not working because we're using 400 pound mono as cable and the whole thing was a mess. We we ended up not using the snare and we just started grabbing them. As you see, there was one's tail right there and I couldn't really get up under that, that ledge right there. So checked out some more angles and I'm checking the area and it's just not working. I, I couldn't get any of them. And as you see right there, there's a shark on us. So we, we were being pretty cautious, making sure we weren't getting chased by sharks or any of that but yeah and this is our last dive on this ledge we're checking them out we're we're realizing that there's not that many big lobster left we've caught a couple and thrown them back because we measured them and they're small but this is our last dive on this rock and there's a couple pretty good ones up under there still and Paul and I end up both catching one on this dive Con 
Colin's chasing one over there. He gets it, and when he grabs that one, it spooks one over to my side, as you'll see right there. He, he pushes over to my side, and I see him, and I shove my hand up under there and grab one. And they end up being pretty good lobster. And yeah. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like or comment, and make sure to check out the next video.